So, it's been a few weeks and I gotta say, I am loving MLB 24. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the honeymoon phase. It's a new game, it's baseball season. As baseball fans, obviously, we're gonna be excited. But not everything is so sunshine and roses on the digital diamond. Cause something's changing in MLB The Show. And not for the best. Something that, in my eyes, could definitely kill off this year's game even sooner than last year's game, which is saying quite a bit. Leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and let's get down to brass tacks. We are just a couple of weeks into the new game. There hasn't been a ton of content that's been released, but what has has almost exclusively been related to the pack market. Yes, we got the Spring Breakout program, which gave out seven Spring Breakout cards, including fan favorites such as the James Wood, the Colson Montgomery, and the Dylan Cruz, but there were 16 Spring Breakout cards released in packs, and that's where the big names like Jackson Holiday and Paul Skeens were readily available. And just the other day, we got the Seasons Awards Drop 1, which is this year's version of the Player of the Month program, given the new Seasons model in Diamond Dynasty. And we got Mike Trout. We have Shohei Otani, four cards with a 91 Garrett Crochet as the top dog. But then you go to the pack market, you see a pack that cost 30,000 stubs, and in that pack, you've got 92 O'Neill Cruz, one of the hotter names in Diamond Dynasty within the past couple of years, at a 92 overall. But the biggest problem, in my opinion, is not that there's good cards in packs. It is a business. You kind of expect that they're going to want to put cards that you want to get packs for, but this is not EA's ultimate team nor is this 2K's my team. This is MLB The Show, which we've kind of come to expect within the past near decade what to expect on their game model. And this is not it, because when you go into the program right here, you don't see one thing that you normally would see. And it's the same thing that programs have been lacking throughout this year in general. There's no way to earn this pack outside of buying it on the market. I mean, you, you could look high and low. There is no pack that you're able to obtain just by playing the game, which means that content is exclusively available to the people that either buy the cards in the market or buy the pack, which the pack in, in its own right is flawed compared to the show's typical game design because this pack is not a choice pack. Like a choice pack, you are guaranteed to get one of the cards within drop one of the season awards, but you're at the mercy of whoever you get you're stuck with, that or selling it, which it is one of five odds to pull a 92, and you see the price discrepancy between an O'Neill Cruz at 90,000 compared to Lourdes Gurriel Jr. at 40K. Even if you did have the higher pull, you aren't getting what you probably want. So not only does it screw over the people who are simply playing the game, they either don't have the want to open that pack for 30,000 stubs, or they don't have the requisite stubs to open said pack, but they're also screwing the people that want to spend the stubs on it because even if they did get the enhanced pull, of the 92 overall, they can still get the card that goes for less than half the one that they probably want. And that same issue could be found in the Spring Breakout program once more, nor set one or set two of the Spring Breakout pack were featured at all in this program or in any program. There is no way to earn this pack outside of buying it, which if you then look at the content that's been released, Granted, again, it's only been three weeks since early access began for MLB The Show 24. There isn't a whole lot of content that's been released outside of packs, meaning putting it all back together. Content is essentially something you have to pay to access, either buying the pack for the chance to pull the cards or by buying them straight out on the market. Outside of that, there isn't much to actually do outside of the Team Affinity XP reward path. Again, in that three week frame, we've had six headliner cards and we are currently on our third chase pack, 
the first being an early access exclusive John Donaldson, and now up to the third on Wyatt Langford. That all makes decisions like this that much more frustrating. When you've got the Battle Royale program, which you can play out, of course, to earn Joe Maurer and Eric Gagne, but you can't sell them. You know, by playing their game, you get the cards, which is good. These are great cards to have on your team for right now. But still, if all the content is released in packs and you're limiting the way that people can earn stubs through just merely playing the game, that's a problem. And that is something that has been very unlike what MLB The Show has stood for as kind of the antithesis of a EA or 2K Ultimate Team style game mode. That is not to say there's no ways to earn stubs in the game. We'll make a video talking about the best ways that you can earn in-game currency. But again, if the content that's being released is primarily in the pack market that just limits who can possibly access your content. And another thing, which isn't inherently their fault, but it needs to be said, cards like this O'Neill Cruz, he is obviously very good. He's a 92 overall shortstop. He's got very good attributes and he fits the Byron Buxton captain boost, which a lot of people use, of course. But with the sets and seasons concept that they still have into play these days, this 92 overall card is probably gonna be replaced in about a week. We're gonna get Team Affinity Chapter Two, and I'm guessing we're gonna see at least 93s, maybe 94s. So this card, which has going for 90,000 stubs, is it even worth it? That's another question. Obviously, that could say, well, okay, pack content isn't that worth it then. Great, that solves the problem. But again, if the majority of content is in packs and that has little staying power, what content actually is there in the game? But that's not to say there's no hope, because this program, I do think they did extremely well, the Egg Hunt program. You got a 91 overall, Christian Yelich, who I think is a very good card in the game at the time he was released. And that's one of a few really good cards. This Jamer Candelario, I've really enjoyed. Aaron Bummer, I've seen a ton online. Relievers are always a premium. So a good lefty, people are always going to desire. And maybe it was a happy accident, but I think all those cards in the program, those three we listed, are equal to more desirable than the ones that were available in the pack. Which in fairness, you can earn this pack only by pulling 100 <laughs> of these jelly beans, which are about one out of every two packs. So let's say you open 200 packs and you're able to earn one of those choice packs. It's not a lot, it ain't great, but technically, there is a way to earn that pack in the game for free. The other important thing to note with the POTM or the Seasons Award program is for the Lightning cards, you will not have to open the packs. You will not have to get the 92 O'Neill Cruz. If you play the programs after drop four and after drop eight, you will keep earning progress to your way for the lightning cards within that season award. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. I don't love the idea of packs being rewards anyway, because I don't think something that has a chance to be good is necessarily a great reward. I'd rather have something guaranteed like this Mike Napoli. I am very much looking forward to getting my way down the XP reward path to get him. I've had a chance to use him in Battle Royale exquisite excellent card i cannot wait for him to be on my team and i know he's going to be on my team i don't have to open a choice pack to hope that i pull him so that's kind of where i'm at with content right now obviously we're early on and we are getting more big stuff next week you know we've got team affinity chapter 2 coming next friday already which in turn would make pack content not so much of a necessity but the downside there is, you know, a lot of people have ran pretty much the same teams. If you've been playing early on this year, most people's teams fleshed out with Team Affinity cards. They're good, that's the reason why, 
but you do face a lot of the same cards over and over again. So in summary, I just think it would be a much better decision to put out a few more cards. You know, there were six in the pack, why not put six in the program? And I think it would also be a fairly reasonable ask to put them at the same overall. The pack cards could still technically be better, more desirable, but let's keep the overalls relatively on the same scale. But the biggest thing of all is just put them somehow available. Put one of those packs, which is a 30K valuation, you know, for getting this program done up to Garrett Crochet. Just one of those packs. And I think that would really help remedy a lot of that. Again, it's a chance to get something you want, but bare minimum, it's stubs. They don't get a card they want, they can sell it, put it towards something they do want. Because that's something guaranteed stubbage that is greatly missing from MLB The Show 24 right now. Otherwise, I've really enjoyed the mode. I mean, Team Affinity is more accessible than it's ever been. Because if you choose to play online, if that's your path, you earn progress pretty quickly. You know, opposed to previous years where it was really emphasizing you going out of your way to play certain modes. I think it's great. It doesn't force you to play online. It doesn't force you to play offline. Choose your way and you'll progress. They did that excellently. The XP reward path, same sort of thing. You play, you get rewards. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Everything else, content structure, I'm a big fan of thus far. Of course, we're going to have to see how the... Season's concept plays out. You know, we're starting to get up on the overall curve. Of course, we're up to 92s in packs and programs to this point. And, you know, new Battle Royale, new rank Seasons is coming next week. I can imagine rank rewards will probably be up to 95s, 96s. It's fast-paced compared to previous years. But I have optimism of how it'll work out. I just think the pack content severely has to be reduced or made in a more accessible way so people who don't want to buy a chance at something they want or don't have the stubs to go out and buy those cards given that there's going to be better cards released the next week you know it, it just makes it a more fun system for everybody so let me know in the comments section what you guys think about mov the show 24 thus far again not even a month in yet we got plenty more videos coming thank you all for watching this one and i'll see you on the next one